Hi, this is Mr. Ferguson from East Millbrook 8th grade science. Uh, we're going to look today at some comparisons and look at the differences between what is the atomic mass and the atomic mass number. We're also going to try and take a look at uh, some relative sizes of things in the atom. So what I've got up here on the screen is sort of a teeter-totter balance. And if I bring down a bowling ball, and we're going to say that bowling ball represents a proton. Uh, obviously, it's on one side and there's nothing over there, so it tips in that direction. If I bring in a neutron, notice that the neutron and the proton, about the same size, and they're going to balance each other out. Now, when we're dealing with atomic, we don't use grams or pounds. We'll never use pounds. We don't use grams. We're going to use a unit that's just really convenient. We're going to use an atomic mass unit. Now, the atomic mass unit was made so that one proton has one atomic mass unit. It really does kind of make our numbers and our counting a lot easier. Now, if we try and let's take the neutron off and let's bring in um, an electron. Notice the electron doesn't make the proton move. Now, in this picture, the electron is shown the same size as the proton. And the truth is, they're not. Um, I'm using a penny to show in comparison to the proton because if a proton was the mass of one bowling ball, an electron would be about the mass of one penny and a whole lot smaller. Now, in order to balance out one proton, we would need about 2,000 pennies. So one electron has about one two thousandth the mass of a proton. So when we're looking at the mass number for an atom, we're really only looking at protons plus neutrons because the pennies are just too small. The electrons, uh, not only are they really, really small, but because they're moving around at such an incredibly fast speed, they're really negligible. And for eighth grade, we're going to pretend and say it's zero. So let's take a look at our protons and neutrons and what that would look like if they were actually down inside of an atom. So we're going to build an atom. Now, this should look kind of like what we're sort of used to seeing when we're looking at an atom. Now, notice in this atom, there are one, two, three, four protons. Now, the atomic number, what makes this atom what it is, has nothing to do with the neutrons or the electrons out here. It's only having to do with the protons. And because it has four protons, this would be beryllium. Now, the nucleus is in the middle, and that has all the protons and neutrons, and the electrons are what look on, on the outside. Now, the problem with this picture, it looks like the electrons are the same size as the protons and neutrons, and it makes it look like they just kind of swing around like planets around the sun in these very predictable uh, circular orbits. And that's just really not how it actually goes. What it would look more like would be this model, where inside we've got this itty, bitty, teeny, tiny spot. That's the nucleus. And all around it would be the electron cloud. Now, since electrons don't have any one particular place that they have to be, and they're moving around so incredibly fast, this is sort of what we call a probability cloud. Now, notice that there's a darker spot. This is sort of in its ground state where it's most likely to occur, but that doesn't mean that's where it actually is. It's not swinging around, again, in some little teeny tiny uh, race course path. It's buzzing around like bees all over the place. Now, if we kind of zoom in here and we're just looking from the nucleus on out to the most likely, the highest probability location that the electrons are in, to give you an idea of the size, if the nucleus proton was still the size of a bowling ball, how far out do you think we'd have to put the penny? Well, if the bowling ball is a pretty standard size, eight and a half inches, sorry, inches, eight and a half inches in diameter, the, the penny would have to be 8.43 miles away. That means if our bowling ball was here at East Millbrook, the penny for our model would have to be almost all the way out to the fairgrounds. What's in between? Well, when the electron's not in any one place, it's empty space. So the vast majority of the atom is really empty space. And out of all this huge space, that little teeny tiny spot down in the middle is where all the mass is. Well, all the mass that we're really going to count for. So in today, we talked about atomic mass, atomic mass number. The atomic number was just the protons. Mass number is protons plus neutrons. And the electrons, 
eh, they're too small. You can forget about them. Thank you.